On August 25, 1949, the geographer Li Siguang held a simple and warm wedding for his daughter Li Lin and her son-in-law Zhu Chenglu in the UK. The bride, Li Lin, wore a white headscarf, and her smile was full of sweetness and joy. The groom, Zhu Chenglu, was a handsome young man, like a jade tree in the wind. What a match made in heaven! Relatives and friends gave gifts and blessings to the newlyweds. At that time, no one expected that this young couple would one day be elected as academicians of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Along with Li Siguang, they would form a family of three academicians. This unique household made remarkable contributions to their country. Today, I will take you into the story of this legendary and beautiful family. Everyone knows that Li Siguang is the father of Chinese geography and a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Without him, many oil field discoveries in China would have been delayed for years. He was the one who helped the country break free from an energy dilemma that had plagued it for decades. But few people know that Li Siguang not only had a successful career, but also a warm, loving family. Behind every successful man is a great woman. For Li Siguang, that woman was his wife, Xu Shubin. The two met at a concert in 1920. At the time, Li Siguang was a professor of geography at Peking University. He loved playing the violin and even composed a piece titled Xing Lunan. It was the first violin composition by a Chinese musician. Xu Shubin attended Peking University's affiliated middle school, where she taught English, French, and piano. One played violin, the other piano. They found connection and love through music. In 1923, the talented couple got married. From then on, they spent 50 years together. Shortly after the wedding, they welcomed their angelic daughter, Li Lin. In that warm and harmonious home, Li Lin enjoyed a carefree childhood. Li Siguang adored his daughter. Every time he came home, he would scoop her up into his arms, holding her in his left arm while writing articles with his right hand. He was a super milk dad, all while remaining immersed in academic study. He never mixed up family and state affairs. In Li Lin's childhood memories, her father's hard work left a deep impression. When he was director of the Department of Geography at Peking University, it was often late when he worked. I once went to invite him to dinner. He raised his head from the microscope and saw me standing there. He asked, Whose child are you? It's so late. Why aren't you home? Your mother must be worried. I laughed and said, I'm your child. I'm here to invite you to dinner. Li Siguang often told his daughter, You're my only child. I'm not talking about boys or girls. As long as you study hard, you're a good kid. I did well in school as a child. I must carry that on as I grow up. Her father's teachings left a deep mark on Li Lin. As she grew, Li Lin studied diligently and earned excellent grades. At 17, she entered the mechanical department of Guangxi University. At 23, she won a scholarship to study at the University of Birmingham in the UK. At 25, she moved on to the University of Cambridge to study physics. Like her parents, Li Lin also had a gift for music. It was through music that she met the charming Zhu Chenglu while in the United States. At a reunion of Jiankiao classmates, Li Lin and Zhu Chenglu sang Songhua River together. The touching lyrics and wistful melody stirred their longing for home. Their shared ideals and passions deepened their bond. Zhu Chenglu was tall, handsome, and an outstanding student. At 22, he graduated from the chemistry department of Southwest University. At 23, he paid his own way to study abroad. He ranked first in the entrance exam and was admitted to Jiankiao University. 
where he later transferred directly to the Department of Biochemistry. During their studies, Li Lin and Zhu Chenglu often met to discuss both their academic subjects and music. One thing led to another, and soon they were in love. On August 25, 1949, Li Siguang invited a few close friends to his home in Bournemouth by the South China Sea. In a modest ceremony, he held a wedding for Li Lin and Zhu Chenglu. The loving father gave his heartfelt blessings to his beloved daughter and her trustworthy new husband. Two years after their marriage, Zhu Chenglu and Li Lin returned to China. Zhu began working as an electrical engineer at the Biophysics and Biochemistry Institute in Shanghai. Meanwhile, Li Lin joined Shanghai's Institute of Biophysics, where she conducted research in material physics. Both of them had promising careers. At the same time, they were deeply in love. They had a daughter, Zhu Zongping. Later in life, Zhu Zongping wrote an article describing her warm, loving family and her father, Zhu Chenglu. When I was born, there were smiles everywhere. My parents, like many scientists at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, devoted themselves wholeheartedly to the scientific development of our country. They were tireless workers. In my memories, my parents were always shadows, not because they weren't there, but because they came home after I'd gone to bed. Afraid to wake me, they wouldn't turn on the light. They'd sit quietly by the window next to me. Sometimes I'd open my eyes in a daze and see a figure in the dark. It might be my father, or it might be my mother. Zhu Chenglu was intelligent and proud. As a young man, he disliked being in the shadow of his father-in-law. He used to joke that having a father-in-law who was vice president of the Academy of Sciences was a burden. People who knew him would tease, saying that if you wanted to annoy Zhu Chenglu, just mention that he was Li Siguang's son-in-law. Zhu Chenglu often taught his daughter, Zhu Zongping, to be strong and independent. Your grandfather is your grandfather, and you are you. Whether it's your grandfather or your parents, you can't depend on them forever. You have to work hard for yourself. In 1956, a high-ranking physicist approached Li Lin. He said, Our country is preparing to develop atomic energy. We need an expert in material science. That person is you. With that, she was transferred to Beijing, reuniting with her parents. After the move, Li Lin became the deputy director of the Institute of Metal Physics. At the time, Zhu Chenglu also had an opportunity to transfer to Beijing. But he was deeply committed to his research, which was already producing results. Since there was no biochemistry institute in Beijing, moving there would have disrupted his academic work. It just didn't make sense. So, for the good of the nation, the couple chose to live apart. One in Shanghai, the other in Beijing, for 12 years. For years, Li Lin always went wherever the country needed her. Even at nearly 50 years old, in 1972, she shifted once again to help with a national priority, the study of superconducting materials. Throughout her life, Li Lin transitioned fields three times. In the end, she contributed to the steel industry, the nuclear energy sector, and superconducting materials. As for Zhu Chenglu, his work in synthetic biology made enormous contributions to the development of insulin in China. He became one of the founding figures of modern Chinese biochemistry. There's even a saying in academic circles, to study biochemistry and not know Zhu Chenglu is like being Chinese and not knowing Beijing. When Zhu was eventually transferred back to Beijing, he stayed focused on his work. He and Li Lin continued the legacy of Li Siguang, working tirelessly. People used to say, don't mention rest. They'd fall ill the moment they stopped. Their days were spent together. 
but apart, in the same house, each working silently, never disturbing the other. Only during breaks would they do Tai Chi, tend flowers, or listen to music. As time passed, Zhu Chenglu became more peaceful, and his relationship with his father-in-law grew increasingly warm. He eventually said, Li Siguang is one of the scientists I admire most in my life. Every evening after dinner, he would walk alongside his father-in-law. In Weigong Kun, Haidian District, Beijing, near the south gate of Central National University, there's a narrow little path. That path is known as Li Siguang's path because he and his family would often be seen walking there together, sometimes discussing academic problems while walking side by side. It's worth noting that Li Siguang's granddaughter, Zhu Zongping, also became a geologist, just like her grandfather. In this family, three generations shared a balance of freedom and equality. They were close, yet casual. For instance, Zhu Zongping would sometimes say, Dad, you're terrible at housework, so clumsy. Zhu Chenglu would just smile and reply, My daughter says I'm clumsy. In 1971, Li Siguang became ill and bedridden. His devoted daughter, Li Lin, slept on the sofa every night to keep him company. On the morning of April 29th, she got ready for work as usual at six o'clock. Seeing her preparing to leave, Li Siguang asked, Where will you have dinner today? Li Lin answered, It's not easy to find food these days. Anywhere will do. Unexpectedly, that would be their final conversation. That very day, Li Siguang passed away. He was 82 years old. In his final moments, Two things weighed on his heart. First, his disappointment that the country had yet to conquer earthquake forecasting. Second, his guilt that his wife, Xu Shubin, had suffered physically because of the life she shared with him. He deeply regretted the toll it had taken on her. He hoped he could make up for that sacrifice in another life. Li Lin, overcome with sorrow, couldn't help but reflect on the love her father had given her. In the 1950s, even after I was married, my father's love for me remained unchanged. My workplace was far from home, and I could only return on weekends. Every Saturday afternoon, my father would leave the house, walk through fields and woods to reach Zizhuyuan, Purple Bamboo Park. He'd sit quietly on a bench, waiting. He did that in both summer and winter. Every time I got off the bus, the first person I'd see was my father. Her husband, Zhu Chenglu, also struggled to accept his father-in-law's passing. I still wanted to learn from him. I never expected he would leave us so soon. After Li Siguang's death, Xu Shubin's health deteriorated rapidly. The blow was too great. She was later diagnosed with cancer. Two years later, she followed her husband, passing away in sorrow. In 1980, both Li Lin, a physicist, and Zhu Chenglu, a biologist, were elected as academicians of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Wu Jieping, a prominent figure in Chinese science, praised them highly. Li Siguang was an academician, Li Lin was an academician. Zhu Chenglu was an academician. Three people from one family, all members of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. This was, and still is, the only family of its kind in the Chinese scientific community. A family of three who became a symbol of intellectual achievement and shared devotion to science. Surely Li Siguang and Xu Shubin knew this, they must have been proud and at peace. In 2002, Li Lin passed away at the age of 80. Before her death, she left a final wish, to have her ashes buried under a small tree at her research institute. Zhu Chenglu honored her request, 
He buried her ashes beneath a pine tree outside the window of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. In 2006, Zhu Chenglu passed away as well. He was 84. This remarkable family, two generations, three academicians, gave their lives to science. Whether it was Li Siguang, Li Lin, or Zhu Chenglu, they each made monumental contributions to China's scientific and technological progress. And behind them all stood Xu Shubin, the quiet force who built a nurturing home that allowed her husband and daughter to thrive. A happy family not only enabled Li Siguang to pursue his career with peace of mind, but also empowered Li Lin to succeed in her own right, both in science and in marriage. Their story shows that career and family go hand in hand. A good home life fuels professional success. And generation after generation, with love and education at its core, a family can raise children who shine even brighter. What do you think of this story? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments.